Welcome back. Since the little edit, we have since taken this tank outside. They have drained all of the sediment out of the bottom of it. Um, pretty much you just take a garden hose and stick it through one of the top ports. Flush all the sediment, uh, rust, and all the scale that's left inside the compressor out. Um, and you're also going to want to put a flashlight through one of these holes and do a port inspection. Um, basically visualize, um, get a good visualization for the inside of the tank and see how it is structurally. Um, you really don't want to run a tank or have any tank in your possession or pressurized vessel that uh, is rusted and rotted on the inside because it's just going to lead to an explosion. But they pretty much are pressure vessels, so if you don't treat them with the seriousness that they can um, inflict, when it, if they do explode or do fail, uh, you know, you could be really uh, sad later on when you don't have an arm or your leg blew off or something like that. So, um, rinse everything out of here, get a good visual inspection through the side port. Tank looks phenomenal. There's only a little bit of, of surface rust. The inside of the tank is barely even rusted. My tank that is older, or tank that is newer, my Campbell Hasfield, that machine has a more rusted inside tank than this did. So I'm not worried about this at all. I was a little concerned because of the age, um, just the color of red slash orange Craftsman. It's usually a redder. Makes me think that it's kind of either set outside or um, you know not seen really the best life. So. Um, but what we are, are going to do is we're just going to take some card cleaner real quick and just clean up the top of this. Um, it's fairly dirty. Just want to wipe it down. I like to use a white sock for cleaning, extra socks that have holes in them. We're perfect for cleaning up stuff around the shop we're just gonna wipe the grease and grime off the top of this that way there's no black stuff anywhere on it we are pretty much reconditioning this tank and giving it a second purpose so I'm gonna treat it as such and treat it as kind of like a new build it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a air tank so all right, that looks better. Let's make the sides real quick. There, looks good. All right, so now we gotta plumb the intake and outtake for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and put some pipe thread on this. Now we're gonna start plumbing the fittings for this. There's a ball valve on that that I might try to reuse. All right, we'll see here. I think we're gonna have to use this for the bottom for the drain, if it'll fit. Let's see, I'll just get a regular drain. Drain coffee for it. So yeah, I do have the fittings to go. Or no, I don't, that's half inch. I'm going to get from half inch to three eighths. I'm going to have to buy one of the valves from uh, Harbor Freight to get that adapter to get to three eighths, then to get back to whatever. So I'm just going to get a ball valve for the top, um, for the hole that's open, and for the one, the outlet. Um, probably just going to do a high pull fitting on there. So it doesn't have to be. And actually, we're going to do a regulator off that. Extra regulators. I'll put that one on my paint gun. Also, gonna have to get a regulator and then an auto valve for the top of this because I want to use a 3 8 ball. Gun, or, so, we're gonna go a half inch to 3 8 adapter to 3 8 ball valve. It's gonna be a female 3 8 and then we're going to go uh, 
male to male three eighths to a female three eighths to one quarter, and then I'll get me down to that. It's gonna be a little bit long, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So, but yeah, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. I have to get some more parts. Pretty much told you guys what I need to get. Uh, we'll be back and have a part two of this when I get the appropriate hardware, probably later today or possibly tomorrow, depending on uh, how everything goes. Um, but I just don't have anything that's that big of uh, a size to put in here, unfortunately. Looking through all the rest of my stuff, all this is one quarter grade. None of that's going to work. Yeah, so we're going to have to get some more parts here for the rest of this, but right now I'll just tap on the rest of uh, this uh, exit pipe up. The well, Actually, yeah, it's going to be the outlet pipe. Put a little teflon on that. I use the yellow gas tape. That yellow, the white stuff is just terrible. It's garbage. Don't even bother with it. So when you do tape, you want to make sure you do it from... Well, not from a clockwise direction. It's very important, otherwise, when you go to put the thing down, it's just going to start spinning with it. And then after you're done, just chase the threads with your finger just to kind of get the material laced into the threads and intertwined, and you'll have a nice, good seal. So that's all ready to go. There was water in here, so I'm going to let this continue draining. So the longer this sits, the more it's just going to drain upright. Um, I do want to fix this handle, however. I wonder if there's some different bolts that I can use. It looks like it's just like self-tappers. But I wonder if I could just chase something bigger in there. Uh, let's see here. I figure out something to reinforce this handle with but for now we'll end it there uh, i gotta get some parts from the hardware store and then we'll be back but this is pretty much how you take a air compressor that's no longer working we pulled the motor off it's sitting on the floor over here and we took it and made it into a portable air tank we have a drain in the bottom functioning drain valve it's a 25 gallon tank it is rated for 130 psi i believe or 100 and so it's ready for 150 PSI, which is perfect because I'll be operating at 120 or 125 to 135. Um, it's from 2000, so it is 23 years old, but the inside of this tank is amazing. Someone definitely took care of this tank when they had it and drained it frequently. Uh, there's hardly any scale in there at all, which is fantastic. So uh, since I can't get this bung off, we're just gonna leave that on there. Uh, hoping that has got, it's gotta be airtight if I can't get it off. <laughs> put it that way um especially with that huge wrench i was trying with so uh we're gonna end this one here i'm just gonna let this continue to drain out and all the water to pretty much on the inside to dry up and then once that's done then we can take it and finish putting the valves on it and just plumb it in and out uh we'll be putting a probably a regulator here and making this a tank that goes right to my hose reel because uh, it is the largest volume reserve tank i have it's probably do a uh, compressor and then um, the 11, the 7, and then the 7 will probably be connected to this, and then this will be connected um, to the air hose and this and that. So the regulator I'll probably put on here, um, that way I can just regulate the pressure out from here, um, and this will be the inlet pressure, or the inlet where the air goes in from. 
uh, the other tank. So should be good to go. Um, and if I just kind of connect to my system how it is at the end of my system, because that last tank is already set up as a dry tank, this tank will already be a dry tank as well because that tank is the last tank in series of the filtration and the series of tanks. So the best way I could describe is if you put air through multiple tanks, when it hits that second tank, the air is right now really, really hot. So it's gonna condense inside that tank on the walls and inside there just like fog would. Um, and then it's gonna fall, most of it's gonna fall to the bottom, but some of it's gonna stay on the walls and inside the tank. Um, so it's very important that you drain them um, to keep the condensate and the water out of them. But more or less what I'm saying is if you have two tanks hooked up in concession, uh, theoretically, by the time you get past the second or third tank, you're not going to see any condensation left in the tank because the, the, all the moisture is going to be already on the walls of the other tanks, if that makes sense. Like if you only have a gallon of water, you can't distribute more than a gallon of water in, inside of the condensate, if that makes a little bit of reason. But I know some things I don't really explain very well, but yeah, what are you going to do? This is backyard logging. This is backyard everything. So we teach ourselves. We learn as we go. That's how this, this channel works and how we work. How we work. I'll give you guys a glimpse of the ducks. They're doing pretty good. Excuse my chugging. Very thirsty. All right. So I'll show you guys the ducks. How you guys doing today? What you doing? Come here. Little waddles. Lazy bones. You lazy. You guys lazy. I'm staying in the ball, staying warm. All right, I'm gonna end this one here. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'll get some parts. Can't really do too much with this more today. Uh, just got to let it drain out and all the water inside to dry up. That's going to be at least probably two or three days before I throw fittings on this. You want that tank to be completely dry before you put air in it. Otherwise, you're just starting off with a rusty environment. So, But uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Uh, we'll be adding this to the system as soon as we get some parts. If anyone was wondering... On air compressors, here, all your information is right in this metal tag right here. On the bottom, it'll say year. You see year 2000 on the very bottom right. Uh, it tells you what the pressure is rated for. Um, 150, tells you where it was made. Just a bunch of information. So if you're ever wondering where that is, it's right inside of your air compressor. Um, tells you pretty much everything about the tank. Um, this is a very common thing to do that people have compressors that don't work. They just toss the motor and keep the tank i got this tank for free which makes it very ideal um this is the own drain valve that came off of it as you can see it put up a good amount of struggle but in the end i persevered you can't be tight if you're liquid so heat it up nice and hot put some pv blaster on her and let her rip i think the thing that held this the most was the red loctite that they probably put on here from the factory so this drain cock is shot and we're not going to be needing that. We're going to have to get a new drain cock, uh, a half inch ball or three eighths ball valve with a half inch adapter, and then we're going to have to get another um, what you call it? Um, do, 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 high flow female fitting for the regulator when it goes on top of here. So regulator, female fitting, drain valve, and um, fitting. So yeah. I'll be back at you when you do that. The mower is down at the moment. Uh, one of my girlfriend's friends is trying to fix the deck. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. But it's got it all ripped apart. I wish him the best of luck. And then kids using the Minecraft sword, of course, to uh, help. Pull the battery out of the mower because someone said they had a mower that uh, worked and ran great. Get there. And uh, mower is completely junk, so I wasted a trip to Silver Creek for nothing. Thanks, Rob Parisio. Deck was sparking. He goes, Oh, I found a problem. I found a problem. 
When you find a problem after a mom and I with money and you agree to a price, that's when you find a problem. That doesn't sound like very good business practice. Anyway, everyone stay blessed. That's the wood pile right now. I got it all covered up because we're getting some rainy weather. Take you guys out and show you that. The wagon's gonna get repainted very, very soon. I got the paint gun to do it and everything set up. Just gotta uh, get her going. But wanna get this wood pile higher and you gotta start do making a bundler and start bundling. So everyone take care. This is Poo Static over and out.